Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and we are constructing functions today from different forms. To do this, you'll need to know how to do three things. One, make an equation from a word problem. Two, make a function equation from a table or a graph. And number three is to make a function equation from pieces of information like points, ordered pairs, x, y values. Let's start out with the word problem because we all love word problems. Let's get started. Greg runs a tow truck business. He charges a set rate of $75 for picking up a vehicle. He also charges a rate of $3 per mile for towing. Create a function equation to represent his fee. The first thing I like to do when I am looking at a word problem is to get rid of all the stuff that's not important. So I'm going to begin with truck. Greg runs a truck, tow truck business. Doesn't really matter. He charges, I don't care, for picking up a vehicle. He also charges something else. Um, we know he's towing, so we don't need that information. And this is much better. We know that we have a set rate of $75 and $3 per mile. That's what we need. So when we set up our equation, it's going to look like this. The fee is $3 per mile plus the set rate of $75. When we write it like that, it makes a lot more sense. And we can write it now as a function in a math term. So it'll look like this. The function, or you could put anything in there, the fee, the amount, y, um, is equal to 3x, $3 times the number of miles. So x is the number of miles, 3 times x, plus our set rate of $75. We know that the graph is starting at 75. Even if he goes zero miles, he's still that set rate is $75. Starts at 75, and then it increases steadily uh, by $3 times each mile. So just a quick note here. The steady rate of increase, or the fee of $3 per mile, that's the slope. Just um, to kind of bring things into perspective here. Our steady rate of increase is our slope. Now let's look at um, what happens when we're getting an equation from a table. I have this table here um, that has our x values on the left, our function um, output, which is our y values on the right. There's a couple of ways to get an equation from a table like this. The first method, the easier of the two methods, is to just look at it and look for patterns. If you're able to pick out some patterns, you can probably figure this one out. First of all, do you see any patterns? Look for patterns among those numbers. Each function of x value increases by 2. It goes 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. That means it's a constant rate of change. That's your slope. All right? So that's good to know. That's going to be our slope. That might have been one thing you picked out. Perhaps you looked at the x values and then the function of x values and say, we multiply x times 2, and then you add 1. In other words, your function would look like this. The function of x is 2 times your x value plus 1. Now, if you can figure this out just by looking at those two points on, or several points on this table, then perhaps you're able to just write out a function equation just by looking at it. And you could explain the steps that you went through and explain you know, how you did that. If you can't do that or the function looks more complicated, then it's time to move to method number two. This is the math method. This is the way that most teachers will teach you to do it. Um, this way is more complicated, but it'll work for linear equations. Let's take a look. First of all, you need to find the slope using the slope equation. We'll, I'll, I'll do all of these steps on separate slides. But first off, you need to find the slope. Then you need to find the y-intercept, or b. The reason why you're going to need to do that is because you have to substitute it into the equation y equals mx plus b. So we need to solve for a variable of b, and again, I'll show you how to do that on a separate slide. Then we need to substitute our slope value, m, and our b value back into that regular equation. It kind of looks complicated, lots of words on the page, which I don't like. So let's clear the page and actually do those steps. Number one, find the slope. 
The slope equation is here. If you need a full lesson on how to do that, please check out um, another lesson. Um, my YouTube channel has one, finding slope from two points. You can pick any two points of your x and y values. x is on the left, y is your function of x. So I'm picking the point 1, 3, and 2, 5. So I'm going to substitute them into that equation, y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. Remember, if you're looking for where my y value is, function of x is the same thing as y. So this is like x and y. So that's y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. And we solve that down to being 2 over 1. In other words, my slope is 2. We knew that. We looked at it and said there was a steady increase of 2, but that's mathematically how you would solve that. I'm going to write that up top. My slope is equal to 2. Next step, I need to pick one point, an xy point, and I know my slope is 2. I'm going to take those three pieces of information, an x value, a y value, and my slope of 2, and I'm going to put them into this equation. My x value will go in there, my slope is m, and my y value is going to go here. So I can pick any point. I'm going to pick the point 4, 9. Why? Um, just because it's different. Okay. So you can see right here the point 4, 9. My x value is 4. That's going to go in here. My y value is 9. My slope is 2. We calculated that in the last question. Now you can pick any of these points and it will work exactly the same way. You can try it out. Um, 2 times 4 is 8. I subtract 8 from both sides of this equation, leaving me with b is equal to 1. 8 plus 1 is 9. That makes sense. So now I have two pieces of information. I know that my slope is equal to 2, we calculated that, and my b value is equal to 1. Now that I know my slope and my y-intercept, I can plug them into that equation, y equals mx plus b, and it'll look like this. Instead of y equals mx plus b, it'll say y equals 2x plus 1. Now I'm going to change it into a function, so instead of saying y, I'll say function of x is equal to 2x plus 1. Notice that's the same equation I had before, and that's fine. It's fine to have that same equation. Um, that means that we did it correctly. That was the math method of doing it. it. Takes a little bit longer, yes, you'll get the correct answer for linear equations every time, no matter how complicated. Sometimes slope is harder to pick out, especially if it's a fraction. Um, and if these numbers are positive or negative numbers, it can kind of throw you a little bit. So using the math method is a good method to know um, when you're trying to get an equation from a table. The third thing we need to talk about is if we want to get an equation from two points. First of all, just understand you follow exactly the same steps that I just showed. The table is essentially a list of points, x and y points. So you'll find the slope, find the b value or your y-intercept, and then substitute them back into the equation. Okay? If you can look at two points and see some consistent change, method one is easier. And I would recommend using it. If you can't, follow those three steps that I listed before. Find your slope, find your y-intercept, substitute them into the equation, and you'll be good to go. Quick review. Functions will come in one of four different ways. They will come as an equation. They will come as a list of ordered pairs. They will come as a table with a domain and range or a function uh, x and a function of x or an input and an output. And they will come as graphs. Any of these methods, you should be comfortable with ch interchanging between them. And being able to do that and change between those is going to be a key part moving forward of dealing with functions in pretty much all the ways that we'll see them. I hope that that lesson was helpful for you. Here's your Common Core anchor and your Pennsylvania eligible content. Have a great day.